Floating in Space by Franklin M. Branley, illustrated by True Kelly. Jump up! Jump as high as you can! You can't go very high because Earth's gravity pulls you down. On Earth, gravity is strong because Earth contains a lot of material. Rocks and soil, water, and metals. If you were on the moon, you could jump much higher. The moon's gravity is much weaker than Earth's gravity. That's because the moon contains much less material. If you were on a shuttle or a space station, you could jump so high you would float to the ceiling. Then you would float to the floor. Up you would float again, up and down, up and down. You would be floating in space. That's because gravity in the shuttle is very weak. In the shuttle, there is so little gravity, it is often called zero gravity. There is no down or up. Astronauts do not jump inside a shuttle or a space station. They move very carefully. They hold onto straps with their hands or their feet. If they keep very still, astronauts can stay wherever they are, even without a strap but if they lift an arm or a leg, they start moving. They might hit a ceiling or a wall, or they might spin around. Wherever they land, they can stand. That means that they could stand on a wall or on the ceiling. Imagine how that would make you feel. Here on Earth, astronauts are used to standing on the floor, just as you and I are. When they first find themselves standing on a wall, many astronauts feel a bit dizzy. But after three or four days, most astronauts get used to space and they enjoy standing on a wall or even a ceiling. In the shuttle or in a space station, you don't feel any weight. You are weightless. Your weight on Earth is the amount of gravity pulling you down. If you weigh 50 pounds, the force of gravity on you is 50 pounds. The heavier you are, the greater the force of gravity is on you. In the shuttle, there is very little gravity, almost zero. So there is very little weight, close to zero. That's why it's easy to move. Also, it is easy to lift things, even if they would weigh a ton or more on Earth. It's really easy to move around in the shuttle. You hardly need your muscles at all, and you hardly need your bones. But to stay healthy, each of us must use our muscles every day. The astronauts do this by using exercise machines. Even so, when astronauts stay in space very long, their muscles and their bones get weaker. And astronauts grow one to two inches taller because gravity isn't pulling on them. When the astronauts return to Earth, they slowly become shorter again. These changes cause backaches for many astronauts. Since there is no down in space, water cannot flow. That means drinking is through a straw, and using the toilet is somewhat different. The astronaut is strapped to the toilet to keep from floating free. Urine is collected and vented to space. Solid waste is dried and stored until the shuttle lands. The toilet looks and works much like one on an airplane. Some of the food astronauts eat is dried. The astronauts mix these foods with water and then heat them in the microwave oven. They often eat food with thick sauces that help the foods cling to the tray. Tray has magnets and Velcro strips underneath so it can be attached to a table or even the wall. Magnetized trays hold utensils in place. Mealtime aboard is often playtime. Astronauts might float a piece of candy and then try to catch it in their mouths. A favorite trick is to suspend a big drop of fruit drink and then slurp it up with a straw. Salt and pepper are in liquid form so crystals do not float around in the cabin. Eating in space takes practice. All the food for the astronauts must be carried aboard the shuttle, but water is given off by the shuttle's fuel cells as they make electricity. The water is collected and then used for cooking, drinking, and washing. Tanks of air are also carried aboard because there is no air in space. The inside of a shuttle is filled with air so the astronauts can breathe.
Outside the ship, there is no air, so astronauts must wear spacesuits and breathe from the air intakes that they carry with them. Portable life support backpacks carries enough oxygen and water for six hours. Underwear is spandex mesh with cooling and ventilating plastic tubing woven in. Spacesuit is bulky because it is made of many layers. Pressure gloves with molded rubber fingertips to permit sense of touch. Oxygen flow adjuster. Notebook. Snap-on visor protects against particles and UV radiation. Communications caps with microphone and headphones under the helmet. Bubble helmet. The suits are big and clumsy, and it's hard for astronauts to move about when they wear them. But they can do hard jobs. They have fixed big satellites and put them back into orbit. They are building a space station for the 21st century. They fasten together big sections that are carried into space aboard shuttles. One of the hardest jobs they had was fixing the Hubble Space Telescope. First, the shuttle had to chase the telescope so the robotic arm could grab it. The arm was operated by an astronaut inside the shuttle. The arm slowly brought the telescope to the cargo area of the shuttle. Astronauts in space suits then lifted the new parts and carefully put them in place. On Earth, the parts were very heavy, but in space, they were weightless. If they had to, the astronauts could have lifted the whole telescope, even though its weight on Earth was more than 12 tons. When the astronauts were finished, the telescope was put back into orbit. At all times during the repair, the telescope was held tightly. If it had been let go, the telescope might have floated away. Outside the shuttle, astronauts must keep hold of everything. The object could be as small as a pin or as big as a section of a space station. No matter the size, it would move forever unless something stopped it. Everything must be held by strings, snaps, velcro strips, or other fasteners. An astronaut easily lifts a 600-pound replacement part for the Hubble telescope. When astronauts are ready to sleep, they do not snuggle down into nice cozy beds. Instead, they get inside sleeping bags that may be hanging from a wall. The zipper is close enough to keep the astronaut from floating free. An eye shade cuts out the light of the cabin. Once asleep, astronauts rest soundly. Sunrise does not wake them, and that's a good thing, because the shuttle sees the sunrise or a sunset about every 45 minutes. That's 16 times a day. It all happens because the shuttle takes only 90 minutes to go once around the Earth. After a few days, the astronauts have completed their jobs and are ready to return to Earth. Everything is double-checked to be sure nothing can float free inside the cabin. A shuttle has been flying between two and 300 miles above the Earth and has been going 17,500 miles an hour. To drop out of orbit, the shuttle must slow down. The ship swings around and the engines fire backwards. Once it is slowed down, the shuttle swings around so the nose is forward. The bottom of the ship is towards Earth, where it will remain. Preparing for re-entry. In orbit, jet thrusters maneuver the shuttle in space. S-turn. Now traveling tail first. Retro fire. One hour from touchdown. Engines fire for two to three minutes to reduce speeds by about 200 miles an hour. 175 miles to touchdown. Orbiter turns to nose first position. 60 miles and five and a half minutes to touchdown. The shuttle eases in towards Earth. Gradually, gravity increases. The astronauts can feel it. The ship slows down as it enters our atmosphere. The shuttle becomes a glider, an airplane without an engine. As it speeds through Earth's atmosphere, the ship heats rapidly. Parts of it get red hot. The shuttle comes down in a long, long glide. It gets closer and closer to Earth. At last, the ship is a small dot that grows larger rapidly as it approaches the landing strip. Lightly and softly, the shuttle touches down. Astronauts take a while to get used to gravity. Then they step out of their ship. Their mission is complete.